Now let's look at graph versus eager execution again in a different set of situation where we have a function get underscore mac. It takes in two input arguments y true and y prayer, and then it returns the mean of the square difference between those two. And up above we have the decorator, which is the add tf dot function, which converts this particular Python function into a TensorFlow graph. And down here we have uh, y true and y pred, which are uh, which are created here, which is tf dot random dot uniform. And we have the integer type 32. And this is how these two tensors look like that we'll use as an input to get MAC. So here in the first case, case we are using a function that creates a graph which is get msc y y underscore true y underscore pred and the output is a tensor with shape uh, shape zero and that's because we get a scalar out which is two now in this case if we want to switch off the ability of the function to execute from graph to eagerly, then that is possible. So above this line of code, if you write tf.config.run underscore functions underscore eagerly is in parenthesis true, then this will run as the regular Python function and we'll get the output as shown below. And after this is done, we want to remember to set it to false as shown in the line below this. Now let's look at another case where we are using tf dot function. Here we try to compare graph versus eager execution, and for that we have a simple uh, function created here in Python, which is get underscore mac, which takes in two input values, y true and y pred. Now within this function we have a print statement that says in quotes calculating mac colon and we have the two input arguments defined here as tf.random.uniform and now what happens is when we call get mac if you remember from the previous explanations that we had the first step that happens is in this case the tf dot function is read and it starts converting this particular code into a graph and while doing so it does print out the uh, print statement. So we get the output here. But now when we call the get MAC again, after this, when the second time, the graph here has already been created. So in the output, we do not see this print statement. And that uh, that is kind of surprising. And the reason for that is because the print statement is not included in the graph. So if you look at the docs, it says that the tracing captures TensorFlow operations into the graph, which would be uh, taking this difference, getting the power of that, and then the reduce mean part. So these are all captured in the graph. However, this print statement is not in the graph. And so uh, if, when we make a call to the function multiple times, we may see some of the Python functionalities that got executed the first time and they are not getting executed in subsequent call for that same function. This could be the reason that maybe those were not included in the graph. Now, here we have an example of a non-strict execution. What I mean by that is in when we perform a eager execution that is python it goes line by line it reads every line runs it and if there is an error it will throw an error however when we run a graph the non-essential parts are not included in the graph and so you might see that uh, it doesn't throw an error so for example here we have a constant x uh, which is this one-dimensional tensor so rank one tensor and then
we have this function unused return eager unused underscore return underscore eager takes in a input value x now when we call this tf dot gather x then we have the in square brackets we have four what this is uh, what we are trying to tell is uh, find the value within the tensor x at index number four so we know that there is no index number four in this particular tensor it's because we have zero one two and three that's the max index so when we run this code in pure python without tensor flow it will throw an error so if you run these lines of code try this will fail and so this would be the except this will print, get printed out and you'll get this invalid invalid argument error indices zero is equal to one now uh, that is what is normal and we know that and here you, as you can see there is no add tf dot function decorator up top to convert this function to a graph now however we have that decorator up there what we are doing now is converting this function into a graph and in when we do that this unused line of code gets skipped in graph execution so when we try to run this try except again we get a value printed which is tf dot tensor one two three and the data type 32 integer 32 and that is because this line of code that was not used because we have an input of x and it already has the return value for x and there is no connection here between the return and this line of code so that gets skipped uh, in the graph execution when we have this decorator up here so our take home message here is that graph skips unnecessary lines of code now here are some of the best practices when using tf dot function uh, these are directly from the docs one to get hands on on how it works uh, the suge one suggestion is to play around with uh, different uh, python functionalities within tf dot function and see how they are getting executed uh, in when you run it as eager functions and when you run it as graph and general idea is that you want to design tf dot function for itself to write into a graph and uh, as i said earlier so if you have written a function you could to verify if it's working correctly or not or if you need to find out any additional details within those two functions you could run it as is eager and then run it as graph and see if the outputs are same more and similarly if we have tf dot variables outside the general idea is to create the tf dot variables outside of the python function and then modify them inside the function uh, that's one suggestion uh, other suggestions include uh, try to avoid writing functions that depend on outer python variables uh, so this excludes the tf dot variables and keras objects and write functions which take tensors and other tens for tensor flow objects as input rather than integers or numpy array they should take tensors and tensors of course they are backed by numpy arrays but uh, it should have inputs that are tensor flow types and then include as much computation as possible under tf dot function to maximize performance gain so for example decorate the entire training step or the training loop uh, 
within tf dot function so that it creates a graph for that and the general idea here is that if you can if the tensor flow is able to create a graph for the lines of code you have the execution would be much much faster and here is an example of how fast it can go so we have uh, initialized x here by tf dot random uniform then we have a function power which takes in two input arguments x and y and then we have result is equal to tf dot i and then we have a for loop here which returns the dot products of x and the result and down below this is the time it where we time it so we'll have to import time it to run this line of code and we have a lambda function that calls this to perform the dot product and we have number set to 100 so this loop will iterate for 100 times oh sorry 1000 times and the execution time for this is 23 and in this in the bottom case where we use the tf dot function for the same power function that we have up above the execution time drops down to 19.8 so it's about uh, so we do have a difference there as compared to we can see that converting the function to a graph uh, in this case runs faster as compared to running the uh, core uh, running the function as uh, original pythons now with performance and trade-offs one point to remember is that when we are build when the a graph is getting built in tensorflow the step of tracing is in process so what tracing does is it captures tensorflow operations into a graph and if the uh, if the if the lines of code are much longer or if the the depends on the code that is written if it's uh, too involved or complicated then the tracing part may take time but then once the graph is created it will be much much faster to run the code using the graph that is created by tensorflow so the trade-off here is that sometimes it could take a longer time to build a graph but then the plus point is that the execution after the graph is built would be much faster.